Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us in today's Twinkle Tips Friday video. Well, folks, everything isn't always as it seems. Whenever I go to record a video, things generally don't work out the way that I expect them to. And I end up recording and re-recording and re-recording the video over and over again. But the benefit is, is, is that it reinforces the knowledge that uh, I have and it invites me to share with you the things whenever I find them and why it's important to learn how to fix things in X-Lite. So what we're going to do is we're, we were go <laughs> well, what we were going to do was we were going to get started with showing you multiple faces on one prop and be able to uh, s uh, add programming for three different faces on a single single prop because people ask that question a lot and that concept in and of itself isn't really that hard to figure out but it's not entirely apparent i figured it'd be a great follow up to last week's video which was on faces and and kind of setting them up well when you find little issues like this, then you want to go and fix them. And I want to do this today with you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Oh, I'm over on the other side of the screen. Let's go ahead and get started. So what we have is uh, we have the singing bulb arch uh, from uh, Boscoyo Studios. And this is a really cute prop. I don't have one of these, but I, I found there were a couple small issues. And if you watch the video up there and you can see what we did last week to edit some of these with the faces effect. All right. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you what I was going to show you when you have this prop. The, there's a really easy way to sequence this. And people ask the question, how do you sequence three bulbs? How do you get them all to do their sequencing? And so the way I would answer this is, is really simple. Here we are in our sequence. And what I want to show you is how easy it is to kind of get rolling with adding just one model, uh, one, one singing face to the prop. So uh, if you have the model here, you'll see there's a little arch in the background. Let me, you know what? I'll go ahead. I'll turn the arch on. And I'm looking at the submodels. These are the submodels for the arch. And I'm just turning it on so that they're on. But you can see there's the bulb. There's bulb number one. But how do you get bulb number two and bulb number three to light up? And what you'll do is you'll right click here over top of the column uh, or the row header there. And uh, you'll go to uh, insert layer below. Now you can do insert multiple layers and it automatically gives you two because we're going to need two layers. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and grab another one of these face effects. And I'm going to change the space definition to bulb number two. So now you have just bulb number one and bulb number two. Well, if you figured it out so far, you guys are pretty smart. You can guess, well, if I want a third one, I need a third layer. And I need a uh, third face in order to make them work. If you want to learn how, uh, see how I got the colors set up, I did a video last week and it's up there in that corner up there. So what I was going to do is I was going to show you the basic way to kind of set this up and create a group so that you could sequence the arches along with maybe you have some other arches. And so to do that, all you have to do is you, you have a submodel already. So they took the time and they, they did these uh, submodels. So we have an arch that's all, that's all the arches. You have a submodel that says arch top, arch middle, and arch bottom. I like those better, so those are the ones that I'm going to play with. If I hold the control key down on my keyboard, I hit control and I click on those three submodels. Now I can right click and I can create a group from selections. And after that dialog comes up, I can give this the name arches. And boom, we're ready to go. Now, let's go back into the Sequence tab. We already got the Sequence open, but we don't see that group that we just created. So let me delete this first. And let's close this up so that you just see the model. But to bring that model in after the Sequence is already open, you have to click and drag the arch over from the Display Elements screen. So the Display Elements screen is this icon here. So come over here to the header and right click and uh, look for Display Elements, Edit Display elements right there. Now you have the display elements and you find the element that you just created that group and you put it where uh, you think it needs to be. Now I typically put my groups over top of my individual models. Uh, other people may not do that. Okay so next what we'll do is we'll grab the uh, single strand effect right here and we'll pull it down and so whenever you have them in the group, they appear to be doing the same thing and that everything looks pretty good. Like that looks like it's working the right way, right? But what if we change our render style to per model default, which is usually how when I sequence, that's what I'll sequence with. Look at the way that the center arch is going opposite. 
of the other arches. And what, what you have to do is you have to double click on the group and you realize this is how you test your submodels to make sure that everything is working the way you think it should be. You can go down one at a time and you see I have this set with a single strand left to right and it goes from actually from right to left. And if we go to the middle one, we lower it down to the middle one, you see it's going from left to right. And then whenever we scroll down to the very bottom one, now this one's going right to left. Well, what that tells me is we have some submodels and the, whoever designed the prop, uh, credit to them for doing the hard work and figuring things out. But also, also it's important, everything be kind of congruent. So whenever you say you want the prop to go from left to right, we know that the middle one is correct. And how do we fix this? So let's go over to the Layout tab, and that's the second part of this video, is we can click on uh, Model, and then we'll click down on the uh, Submodels here. And we'll go to, we have the top, the middle, and the bottom. Now we know the middle one, you see the middle one right here, is set up correctly. However, the top one is set reverse. These happen to be typed in 1 through 65. Number 1 is over here on the right, and number 2, 65 is on the left and what we need to do is we need to reverse the row now that function exists in xlight thanks to uh, the developers realizing hey you needed a way to quickly reverse it so if we click ok we've we've reversed the row there and we go back into the sequencer tab here and what if we go back up here and we do per model default again now you see the top row and the middle row are doing the exact same thing which is correct but you see the bottom row doing the wrong thing. And now, obviously, you know how to go in and fix this. That's a real simple fix. We can come down here, submodels, go to the arch bottom, go and click reverse row, click OK, save the layout because you made a change in the layout. And now if you click on this, per model default should actually work the way that it was meant to. All right, guys, that is your Twinkle Tips Friday video. It's a little bit longer because whenever you hit roadblocks, you have to, you know, beat through them and find ways to fix things for yourself. And it gives you the tools and the information necessary to go on and create your own things in x -Lite. So we hope this video was helpful and informative to you guys. It helps maybe took a little frustration out of what you're doing with x -Lites. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section down below. That's what that is for. Join us every Tuesday for our PPD web webinar or we do an open mic night if you have questions uh, we always uh, are willing to help the community get their answers so it's every Tuesday 8 30 p.m. Eastern time if you like the video give us a big thumbs up if you haven't done yet so smash that subscribe button there darn it and finally if you appreciate the things that we do here at pixel pro display it would be fantastic to have you as a PPD sequence club member each month we create one brand new to the store sequence for the club members and you get a choice of two other ones if you don't care for the first one and you get awesome discounts from our ppd affiliates ppd sequence club is the only sequence club that pays for itself guys thank you for joining me this is clyde signing out we will see you in the next video take care and bye for now watch it up there over watch it over th watch it up over there <laughs> Watch the video up over there, and uh, you'll see what uh, what I've what I did to edit some of these videos here. Um